Today, we are going to dissect a cool text animation technique in Fusion. Think of this as a practical exercise in motion graphics, breaking down a seemingly complex effect into manageable, understandable components. We'll be manipulating text, separating letters, and adding some dynamic flourishes. Let's dive right in. First, imagine the canvas. We need a backdrop for our textual performance. Let's create a gradient background. Think of it as setting the mood. Add a background node. Now, instead of a flat color, we want something more vibrant. Change the type from solid color to gradient. And to really give it depth, let's switch the gradient type from linear to radial. I'm partial to a light orange core transitioning to a richer, darker orange at the edges. But this is your artistic playground. Now, the main act, the text itself. Add a text node and connect it to your newly created background. For this demonstration, I'll be using the word text. Of course, you can adjust the font and size to your liking. Rendered in a bold, vibrant red. The color choice is deliberate. It helps us visually distinguish the letters as we work on them individually. We'll be separating the letters shortly, and the red makes that process much cleaner. Here's where things get interesting. We're going to create duplicates of our text node, one for each letter. So copy and paste the text plus node. Drag in a multi-merge node and place it between the text and the merge one node. Connect the copied text plus node to the multi-merge. Now reset the color of the copied text plus node to white. Remove all the letters except the first one. Copy and paste the text plus node three more times, so we have enough nodes for each letter. Connect all the text plus nodes to the multi-merge node. Now for the individual performances. In each of the copied text nodes, we're going to isolate a single letter. Select first copy node and position T in place. For the second node, remove the T and palace it with E and position it in place. Next, replace it with XE and position it, and last, just position the T in his place. With our individual letters in place, we no longer need the original text node. Go ahead and delete it. Notice the letters disappear. That's because the first input of our multi-merge node is now empty. Connect the first individual letter to that first input of the multi-merge, and they reappear. Now, we need precise control over each letter's movement. We'll use a DVE node for this. It allows us to manipulate the anchor point, which is crucial for our animation. If any of you discover a way to directly manipulate the anchor point within the text node itself, please share your wisdom. For now, the DVE node is our tool of choice. For my animation setup, I'll move the first letter, T, downwards. The second letter, T, will go upwards. The letter E will move to the right. The letter X will stay in the center. Let's bring these letters to life. Advance your timeline to frame 24, which represents one second at 24 frames per second. Select the DVE nodes for the first T, E, and the second T. Create keyframes for their position. We'll also create keyframes for the Z rotation of the two Ts. We'll animate the X a bit later. Now, rewind to frame zero. Select the last T, and set its Z rotation value to 1. Adjust the Y center value so it's hidden below the frame. Now select the first T and also set its Z rotation value to 180. Adjust the Y center value so it's hidden above. For the E, go to its text plus node under the transform tab. Create a keyframe for the X size value at both frame zero and frame 24. At frame 0, increase the X size value, and in the DVE node, change the X center value to make it disappear to the left. For the X, at frame 24, create a keyframe for its Z position. At frame 0, set that Z position to 0. The animation is a little stiff, wouldn't you agree? Let's smooth things out using the Spline Editor. Select the DVE nodes for the T characters. Choose only the rotation keyframes. Press Ctrl plus A to select all. Then press S to smooth them. Press Ctrl plus T to open the Ease tab. And adjust the in and out ease to ensure smooth transitions. Now, adjust the position graph similarly. Repeat these steps for the second, third, and fourth DVE nodes. Oh, I almost forgot the E character. Select it, go to spline, and follow the same smoothing process.
Now, let's make the animation even better. Now, a little visual flair for the E. Add a background node and a polygon mask. Connect them to a multi-merge node. Change the background color to white. In the polygon mask, draw a vertical line. Uncheck Solid and check the This. Increase the width to fit the E. Go to frame 0 and let's remove a shape animation. Set the position and length to 0. Then go to frame 6 and set both to 1. Now, go back to the Spline Editor to smooth the animation. However, this effect doesn't sync with the timing of the E animation, so let's fix that. The timing of this line animation is crucial. It needs to be perfectly synchronized with the E animation. In the Keyframes tab for the Polygon Mask, carefully adjust the keyframes to align with the E's movement. Copy the polygon mask twice and adjust the position of each copy to create similar lines for the other parts of the E character. Now, let's create a bit of a staggered effect. Select the two DVE nodes after the first and second T and open the keyframes tab. Move all their keyframes 20 frames forward. So now we have this. I don't like the E and X letter in this frame, so select DVE node after X character and open again the keyframes tab and move it 20 frame also. Now, the animation looks much better. Let's refine the X a bit more by adding an outline. In the X Text Plus node, go to the Shading tab, enable Element 2 and set its color to white. At frame 32, create a keyframe for Element 1 Opacity at 0. 10 frames later, at frame 42, set it to 1. I don't like the thickness, so I will decrease it a bit now. Smooth the animation in the Spline Editor. So now we have this. For that cinematic feel, let's add a subtle zoom. Add a transform node encompassing the entire composition. At frame 42, create a keyframe for the size property. A few frames later, decrease the size slightly. And as always, smooth this animation in the spline editor. The animation is looking great, but those lines we added earlier, they're a tad too quick. Select the three polygon masks, go to the keyframes tab, and just the last keyframes a few frames forward to slow them down. They also seem to appear a little late, so shift all the keyframes back a few frames. Finally, the finishing touches. Enable Motion Blur for all the animated nodes in the Settings tab. This will add a beautiful sense of fluidity. And for a bit of added depth, add a Drop Shadow node and adjust the values to your taste. And there you have it, a dynamic text animation, broken down step by step. I think it looks really cool. What do you think? Don't forget to ask questions, and I'll see you in the next video.